Hello everyone, you're watching the Morning Swim Show for Wednesday, December 16th, 2009. I'm Jeff Cummings filling in today for Peter Bush. We've seen a lot of world records in 2009, both in elite swimming and in masters, and a lot of the talk is that the high-tech suits had a big hand in many of those records, if not all of them. But then there's Chris Stevenson, who just last weekend set three new Masters world records without the aid of the high-tech suits. Stevenson wore only jammers on the way to new records in the backstroke events for the 45 to 49 age group. And he joins us right now from his home in Richmond, Virginia, to tell us all about it. Chris, how are you doing today? Oh, uh, just fine, Jeff. Thanks. So uh, you, you set those records last weekend and only in jammers, and you told me earlier that um, it wasn't really your, your choice to do that. It was kind of some extenuating circumstances that led to that. So tell us about that. Uh, so I was at a meet, and I had a couple, you know, a, a bodysuit and a backup, um, and they got stolen. Um, and this was in July. It was the, it happened to be the exact same weekend as FINA made the announcement that they were going to ban those suits for at least the elite swimmers um, starting in January 1st. So I, I wore jammers for that the rest of that meet, and I just decided that, you know, I had to make a decision. I was like, you know, if – I wasn't sure if Masters would follow suit, but um, I decided that if we're going to get rid of them, I might as well sort of start my withdrawal symptoms now. So, um, so I, ever since then, I've been swimming in Jammer. So I swam in Indianapolis, and then um, and then the meet just now in Boston. That's that that's pretty impressive. Were you expecting to set any world records in Boston? Um, well, I hope to. Um, I guess, well, two of those world records I had set earlier um, in the year when I wasn't rested because I just aged up. So I, I sort of hoped that when I was rested, I'd swim a little bit faster. Um, but, you know, so the bigger story, I guess, was, at least in my mind, the bigger question was how close I would come to my times that I had done the year before uh, wearing the bodysuit, both, you know, in the summer and, and then just, you know, and then in short course meter season. So now... Of the three backstroke records you said, I think your 200 back was the most impressive. 205.54. Uh, tell me about that race. What was going through your mind? Um, well, and 200 back is maybe of the three the one I like the most, too. Um, I, I, actually, what was going through my mind, I do a lot of work on you know, my 200, tra my 200 pace training, you know, what it's going to feel like and everything. Um, so I started and I kind of missed the first turn. I mean, not badly, but badly enough that I didn't get much of a push off. Um, and so, you know, all that pace training kind of flew out the window and I, sort of, I was like, oh, I just lost, you know, five tenths or whatever. I need to make it up. And so um, I got a little more tired than I wanted to, but um, still, I was happy with the swim. I was only about half a second off of what I did last year with the tech suit. So. <laughs> Well, that's, that's, that's really impressive. And uh, those of us in Masters who know you know that you're a really strong underwear dolphin kicker. What kind of training do you do to work on that? Uh, we, I would say we do at least one set a day in practice um, that's a kick set. And, and, you know, it's not high intensity every single time, but um, it's just as hard as any swim set. And I think that's probably... Most people, they say, oh, I'll do some kicking maybe, and but they use it as a break from, you know, between their two swimming sets or whatever, uh, between their swimming sets. And, and our coach really makes an, you know, makes an effort to say, look, you know, this is where you need to build up your strength. So I'll, I'll really work that. I'll work on some, do some hypoxic work. Um, anytime I do any kind of backstroke set, I make sure I take at least seven or eight kicks off of every wall. Um, so that's the kind of, kind of things I do. So when you're doing these 200 backstrokes, do you uh – are you still keeping the same amount of kicks that you're doing at the beginning as a, at the end? Um, generally, you know, I play around with different strategies. So like this past weekend, um, the first 100, I took seven kicks. And then the, the third 50, I kind of worry, especially I was getting a little tired. Um, so I, I backed off a little bit, took six kicks. And then the last 50, I went back up to seven. So sometimes that third 50, because, you know, because if you take too many early on, it, it comes on you in a hurry, um, and uh, you, you just want to make sure that that last 50 you're still feeling strong. Because what I've found is it's not the beginning of a race, you know, that the strong kickers will certainly make up some ground, but a lot of people are strong kickers at the beginning of a race. It's that last half and the last 50 of a 200 where you can really put some, put some ground on people. Yeah. I want to go back to talk of the high-tech suits. Now, FINA hasn't really made any decision yet 
on whether they're going to still be allowed in masters. They're going to meet in January. Now, if you're a voting member of FINA, would you vote to keep the tech suits and masters, or would you want to go back to jammers? Um, I, I I like the idea of having masters swim under the same rules as everyone else. Um, you know, the all the elites and the Michael Phelps and everything. So um, so I'd rather just have it be consistent. Um, ultimately, I think for practical purposes, it will have to be anyway because I, maybe I'm wrong, but I can't see the swimming manufacturers. Uh, making suits only for master swimmers. Um, so my personal opinion is, yeah, I would rather them uh, be the same. Well, one last question, Chris, for you. Uh, you're an environmental studies uh, science professor at the University of Richmond. Um, how often do you use the term global warming in your lectures? And when you do, do you accompany it with any kind of horror movie music to kind of scare everybody? <laughs> no, no, it's all very academic, you know. Um, so I'm, I'm both I'm a chemist by training. So I teach in chemistry, and then I teach in environmental studies, environmental science. Um, I, you know, I teach some class, I teach some environmental chemistry classes, and we'll cover you know the carbon cycle and global warming, uh, but very much you know sticking to the science of, aspect of it. And then um, I teach some broader environmental studies classes where we'll look at you know economics and policy and all that. So no nothing nothing real dramatic. Well, we know it's finals week and you've got uh, some kids waiting to, to take some finals, so we'll let you go. Thanks a lot for joining us today, Chris. Well, thank you, Jeff. All right, that's uh, Masters World Record holder Chris Stevenson, and we'll be right back with the set of the week. There's a reason for the sunshine sky, and there's a reason why I'm feeling so high. You get more power and more space. The world gets fewer smog-forming emissions. The third-generation Prius. It's harmony between man, nature, and machine. Welcome back. It's time for our set of the week. David Dimitrov of the University of Calgary swim team won both IMs at last weekend's Paul Bergen Jr. Invitational and posted personal best times in both events. Dimitrov spoke with our Garrett McCaffrey about a broken IM set that likely had something to do with his major improvement. It was four times broken 400 IM, so I had to do, I, I forgot the pace times, but there was uh, four 100s, one fly, one back, one breast, one free, and um, they were, they had, I had to get right on my times four different uh, for consecutive times with only a 200 easy. So in between, in between four 100s. So, it was so four 100s, 200 easy. Gotcha. And then four times through. Did you get that? But yeah. And then, um, well, the first round was kind of, I don't know. <laughs> uh, the the first round was kind of, I don't know. Uh, I I got off my pace time. Like my coach, uh, he saw that it was, yeah, because he was kind of mad at me at the same time. <laughs> and he, he asked me what was what was the time that I got, and he said it wasn't fast enough. So he made me repeat the set actually. So I had to do it five times through. And um, yeah, uh, I progressively got faster and faster because it was one of those sets where you're angry at your coach, he's angry at you, and you just want to prove him wrong. And uh, yeah. And we'll be keeping an eye on David Dimitrov. Make sure to head over to SwimmingWorld.tv to watch more of the interview Garrett did with David and see all the finals races from the meet and more interviews. That's the show for today. For Peter Bush, I'm Jeff Cummings reminding you to keep your head down at the finish.